Hello, welcome to Chinese Folk Tales. I'm Victoria Meekin. This story is a warning. If you do good things and tell the truth, then everything will turn out right. Tell lies and you won't be so lucky. Anyway, let me explain. Once upon a time, in a mountain village, there lived a mother and her son. They were very happy indeed. Her son was honest, sincere and hard-working. Every day, Xue Yi, for that was his name, would walk through the woods and chop firewood to keep them warm. One day, a beggar chanced by. Please help a beggar boy. My name is Wang An. I am weak. I have no food. I have no home. I shall surely starve to death. Oh, my poor dear. Come in. I've just made some lovely noodles. We can't have you wandering the streets like this. You must come and live with us. Mother, you're so kind to this poor soul. We can be brothers. You are a good boy. Now, go and give him another bowl of noodles. He's skin and bone and needs feeding up. Lovely. One day, sometime later, the two new brothers were talking in the courtyard. And you see that mountain behind the house? That big, ugly-looking thing? That's the one. Well, on that mountain lives a nine-headed monster. Really? Wow, that's unbelievable. And the monster regularly comes down in a puff of evil, foul-smelling smoke and snatches people away and holds them prisoner in its lair. Smoke? Horrible, evil-smelling stuff, very dark and demonic. Like... that. Wong Un pointed towards the mountain, where an angry dark cloud of smoke was rolling towards them menacingly. Oh, my word, said the young man. Then almost without thinking, but with enormous bravery and presence of mind, Xie Yi drew his bow and fired an arrow into the ominous cloud. The smoke changed direction and headed back towards the top of the mountain and the monster's lair. But not before a fine embroidered shoe fell from its black heart and tumbled to the earth, landing right in front of them. Blimey! Look at all this blood on the ground. I reckon you did some damage there. Xie Yi realised straight away that the monster had once again abducted some innocent young woman. There and then, he made up his mind to do something about it. This is ridiculous. It's not safe for people. Let's follow the monster and save this poor young girl. And together, they followed the trail of blood right up into the mountains until they reached a black cave. They peered in. Inside, it was blacker than pitch. You stay here and guard the entrance while I go in, said Xie Yi. I wholeheartedly agree with this plan, said Wang An who moved well away from the entrance before sitting down. Xie Yi, arms outstretched to feel the walls, walked deeper into the cave until he could see a bright light ahead. As he got closer, he could see a young woman, wearing a fine gown, carrying a bucket of water. She was overjoyed to see him. What are you doing in this awful place? I am the daughter of the Emperor. One moment I was playing in the peach garden, and the very next I was plucked up by the monster who brought me here. 
I have to cook and clean for it. I just want to go home. Fear not, princess, for I, Shei, have come to rescue you. How exactly? Um, actually not entirely sure. Any ideas? Actually, yes. The monster has nine heads. Cut off one, and it will simply grow again, and catch you, and eat you. Ah, um, so, so is that the plan? Only... Of course not. One of its heads is real. Cut that one off, and he'll die. I will hide you in this stone cabinet, where you can't be seen. When you shot your arrow, you wounded the monster. It will ask me to apply some medicine. Watch very carefully. I shall tap his real head three times. At that moment, you jump out and chop it off. One dead monster. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. At that moment, the nine-headed monster returned and demanded the princess give him some medicine. <sighs> yes, oh monster. Where does it hurt? Oh, I see. You've got an arrow stuck in your eye. That must hurt. Come here, and I'll apply some medicine. And as she did so, she checked to see if Shi Yi was watching, and then tapped the monster on one of its nine heads. <coughs> Shi Yi burst out of the stone cupboard, leapt forward, and swiftly chopped off the monster's head in a single blow. <coughs> He grabbed the princess's hand, and they ran as quickly as their feet could carry them, back through the cave to the entrance where Wang An was waiting. Finally! What took you so long? Oh, well, hello. Who's your friend? Wang An, the emperor's daughter. Emperor's daughter? This is Wang An. Look, take it to safety while I go back into the cave to make sure the scary monster is truly dead. My hero! Here! And she plucked a precious bead from her embroidered shoe and gave it to Shi Yi as a sign of affection. But once Shi Yi went back into the cave and seeing that the princess had fallen asleep through exhaustion, Wang An decided to seal off the entrance to the cave with boulders. There was bound to be a reward from the Emperor for the return of his daughter. Why shouldn't he be the one who collects it? And he carried the sleeping princess back to the palace. <laughs> Once Shi Yi was certain that the monster was dead, Yep, dead as a doornail. He returned to the cave entrance and found that it was blocked. Oh. He couldn't get out. As he was scratching his head in puzzlement, he heard a noise coming from deeper inside the cave. He followed the sound and eventually found a big stone pillar to which a small white dragon was attached. A piece of spell paper was attached to its head. I'm so pleased you came back. I was also captured by the monster. Please release me. Remove this bell paper from my head. Shi Yi did as the small dragon asked, and suddenly, with a snap, it broke free from its chains. Almost immediately, the dragon transformed into a young man. Whoa! <laughs> a thousand thank yous. Look. You've probably got things to do, but my father is the Dragon King. Please, come to visit. Oh, uh, okay. Why not? But Shi Yi took a deep breath as he thought. How are we going to get out of this place? 
he closed his eyes to have a think and gave a big sigh. And when he opened his eyes, he realised he was no longer standing in a dark cave, but somewhere absolutely spectacular. Welcome to our Dragon Palace. The Dragon King was overjoyed to have his son return to him. The little white dragon explained to his father exactly how he had been captured by the nine-headed monster and how he had been rescued by Shi Yi. The Dragon King expressed his deep gratitude and threw a delicious banquet after a personal tour of the palace. And this is our treasure hall. And over here, our finest gardens. A few days passed in splendid opulence, but despite the kind hospitality, Shi Yi was sad. To be honest, O oh Great Dragon King, I'm homesick, and I just want to go back. Uh, very well, but let me give you a precious gift. The Dragon Boy whispered to Shi Yi. The only thing worth getting is the magic treasure gourd. With that, you can have anything you desire. Remember, treasure gourd or nothing. So, what will it be? This precious pearl? There's none finer. This volcanic agate rock. Such beauty. All very kind, but I'd like the treasure gourd. Oh, really? You want that? Very well. You did rescue my son after all. And the Dragon King handed over the treasure gourd. His son explained how to use it, and Shi Yi immediately set off back to his home on the mountain. It was an arduous journey, and it wasn't long before Shi Yi was very hungry. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, if only I'd packed. Hey, wait a minute. Of course, the treasure gourd. Magical treasure gourd, give me a plate of food, a jug of wine, and a bowl of hot, dry noodles. And in a flash, it was all there. An absolute feast. He ate and drank everything up. It made him feel really sleepy, but he was very keen to be heading home, so he had a good idea. Magical treasure gourd, give me a small donkey, he said. And just like that, a small donkey appeared before his eyes. He got on the beast's back and it carried him swiftly home while he enjoyed a lovely sleep. As he drew near to his journey's end, he was hoping for a big welcome from his mother and thought, She's probably going to cry with happiness when she sees me. And indeed, as he arrived home, his mother was sobbing. But she couldn't see him, because while he'd been away, she had fallen on hard times after losing her sight. Chi Yi remembered the treasure gourd again. Magical treasure gourd, give me medicine to heal my mother's eyes. And miraculously, a little vial of medicine appeared in his hand. He applied the medicine to his mother's eyes, and her sight was immediately restored. I thought you were dead. He said you were killed by the nine-headed monster. Who told you that? Wang An. When he came back after rescuing the Emperor's daughter. <laughs> the Emperor was so happy to have the princess back. And Wang An has wanted for nothing ever since. He lives like a king. In fact, he plans to marry her tomorrow. In his dreams, said Shi Yi angrily. And he made his way swiftly to the palace 
where he was granted an audience with the Emperor, who was confused. Why should I believe your story? She Yi took out a precious bead the princess gave him as a sign of affection, but the Emperor still didn't believe him. Just then, the Emperor had a thought. He clapped his hands and summoned the princess to adjudicate. I thought you were dead! Immediately when she saw She Yi, she burst into happy tears. Father, this is the man who slayed the monster and saved me. Then it shall be you who will marry my daughter. That's so great. I didn't much like the other chap. And that's what happened the very next day. The whole land was happy and joyful. Everyone except for Wong, that is, Wong Un. The cheeky beggar did not get away with his lies, and instead of a life of luxury, the Emperor saw that the bad man was punished for the rest of his life. And with that, we conclude this episode of Chinese Folk Tales. Thanks for listening. If you like our stories, do give this podcast a five-star rating. Leave your comment and share with your friends. To hear more, please subscribe to Chinese Folk Tales on all major podcast platforms.